this disorder and known forms of photodystonia. What I ended up using is this, uh, Alton Mueller's, Eckhart Alton Mueller's, what he called a heuristic uh, model. I consider, I kind of think of it as a spectrum model that shows the progressive worsening of motor control problems into disorder. It's a awesome tool. Um, I don't really have time to go over all the details, so what I want to do is kind of distill it down to its um, most basic elements. So here's Alton Mueller's description of his model, a heuristic model assuming a continuous worsening of motor control from temporary subtle awkwardness to increasingly unstable motor control and finally fully developed focal dystonia. Essentially, it's, it's when you start with a problem like embouchure fatigue or a slight awkwardness you have when you play under certain situations. Things that have a, a lower frequency, lower intensity, experience a, a smaller duration, there's more fluctuation between experiences, and there's a greater impact, relatively greater impact, of different interventions. And over time, as the problem uh, progresses and experiences more often, as it bleeds into the elements of playing, the frequency and intensity starts to increase, the fluctuation between experiences decreases, and the impact of interventions um, also decreases until the fluctuation and in intervention essentially disappears and you're left with dystonia, a, a constant, regular part of your plan. So how can we take all Mueller's model and use it to make comparisons to the disorder I was investigating? Um, there's a lot of different ways, but for uh, brevity's sake, I thought the most concise way for this presentation is to focus on dynamic stereotypes right there in the middle. This is the uh, term all Mueller used to describe the point where motor control problems, things that are more uh, situational, less serious, start to become more learned habits. Uh, the term dynamic stereotype is a deep cut reference to Pavlov, all Mueller used to describe. It's just where um, something that used to happen in certain situations now becomes a learned habit that happens regularly, which leads to focal dystonia. It's dystonia like, essentially. Um, so here's Alt Mueller's description of dynamic stereotypes, and we're going to be focusing on when motor, when motor incoordination and lack of motor control persists for more than four weeks, even though rest has been observed and careful rehabilitation under the guidance of a therapist or teacher has been attempted, one can assume a more grave alteration of sensory motor networks leading to uh, deterioration of motor programs in the central nervous system. So how do we take this and differentiate between people who fall under the motor problem, right, and the spectrum, uh, motor fatigue, overuse, and the motor disorder, disorder problem, focal dystonia and dynamic stereotypes. We ended up just taking this part of the wording, the description for dynamic stereotypes, and we just created this question. This is a screenshot of the survey we sent out. Did your experience persist for more than four weeks despite pedagogical advice and or professional advice? kind of description uh, Alt Mueller used for dynamic stereotypes. We turned it into a question. Yes, no, maybe. 150 respondents in our survey said yes, their, their experience persisted for more than four weeks. Um, so let, let's assume that these people fall under the disorder category, right? Well, we now see a, uh, a subsequent increase between the two groups, the uh, problem group and the disorder group, where we see differences in the frequency, intensity, fluctuation, an impact of intervention uh, as shown in Alton Mueller's model. So here's how we measure the frequency in the survey. This is another screenshot from the survey. You see we have the frequency of this problem in the following situations. Three hundred point VAS sliders, never to every time I play, by three different times, before the first one of the piece, before the first one after the rest, and while playing. We asked an identical question for uh, severity, um, where the intensity of the problem, only the VIS sliders were labeled mild to severe. Now here we have those same times before the first note of a piece, before the first note after rest, and while playing, and we have the average frequency, and each box represents uh, those timing, and then we have it separated by the people responded yes, people who we can assume were in the disorder category, and the uh, in blue, the problem category. And you can see the people who uh, reported who were putting in the disorder category has significantly higher average frequency than people in the problem category. And it's the same pattern in the intensity. So yes, the people who uh, we're cutting in the disorder part, part of the spectrum 
have greater frequency and intensity of this program, uh, problem. So what about fluctuation? Here's how we measure fluctuation, right? Um, four different categories. Uh, daily, I had this problem to some degree every day. Regular, I had it uh, most days, but not every day. Periodic, it will bug today to where I would when I have it. And rarely, I had the problem every now and then, but rarely. Uh, essentially a four point Likert scale with some more meaningful descriptions of what the categories mean. The idea being that someone who re reported daily had less fluctuation in their experience than someone who uh, reported having it rarely. So here we have um, bars. And we have the four fluctuation categories, and you can see people who are in red uh, in the problem category have less difference in the uh, fluctuation level versus people in, in the disorder category have much greater um, consistency in their problem experiences with less fluctuation. And then finally, uh, let's look at the impact. Here's how we measure impact. We have the impact of the following interventions. And then again, the AS sliders, when they started in the middle with no impact, and they can either uh, report a negative impact or a positive impact by these different uh, interventions, rest, pedagogical advice, and professional health care. So will the people in the disorder uh, category have less impact uh, to these different interventions on their experience than the people in the problem category? Again, rest, pedagogical advice, professional health care. Group disorder problem, and yes, people lumped into the disorder portion have significantly lower impact of these different interventions on their problem than people in the problem category. So there are a lot of other measurements that I didn't really have time to include uh, that show different ways that this problem meets um, Alton Mueller's model for the progression of motor control disorders, uh, suggesting that this problem could be a unique form of focal dystonia that hasn't really been covered in the literature. But one thing I wanted to kind of uh, leave as a, a primary takeaway from this is this, the professional healthcare category. We measure time spent on uh, interventions separately from impact. So people would report how much time they spent on these different interventions for their disorder. And 146 people reported spending some amount of time on rest. 195 reported spending some amount of time uh, seeking pedagogical advice for this problem. Uh, and 48 people reported seeking professional health care for this problem. So musicians aren't seeing doctors for this problem. They generally consider it a technical issue up until it reaches a point where it's no longer a technical issue. And now it is a disorder. Um, and I know having had this problem, being a working musician, being a working teacher, this is a big topic among brass teachers. Uh, but it's very unheard of in the uh, performing arts medicine community and the doctor community in general. And I know Pema um, talks often about the integration between doctors and musicians, and I think this problem is a, a great opportunity for that integration. So far, uh, I've shown that there is evidence that this suggests that this problem is a new form of focal dystonia, uh, and yet it's been studied by two people of me and a euphonium player 15 years ago. So there's a lot of opportunity for integration between doctors and musicians on this problem. And because I am a performer and I love drama, I, uh, one of the things I ask is I ask respondents to provide a one-word description of this problem, and I compiled all their one-word descriptions into a word cloud, which is why I'm going to end this presentation. Thank you. Sure. The, the 
Fabulous to another. I'll get there. The single subject case studies and the EPI survey from 2002, all of these kind of classified this problem as musical stutter. That's why in quotations right here, musical stutter in quotations. Uh, they considered it a form of stutter. Uh, I kind of think that's not quite accurate. That leaves out one of the things they never talk about in these studies is the physical manifestations. The way the chest tightens and the larynx closes and the tongue kind of stops. All of you describe this as tongue stop. Right? Um, I think that leaves out a lot of different parts. Now, one of the things I want to do in studying this is, I believe, uh, based on this evidence, it is a form of focal dystonia, but I think it's a dystonia of maybe the, the respiratory muscles or the larynx or the glottis. It's something more akin to that. I'm not sure what. It was not be study. Uh, not able to make those determinations. But yeah, there is a, a lot of the previous literature kind of considers this a form of musical stuttering. That's just kind of talking about the, the audible output. The end game, what you get, kind of what, what you heard me demonstrate, it sounds like stuttering. This. It shares similarities with stuttering, but I think it's missing uh, a lot of aspects of the problem. Hopefully that answers it. Hi, my name is Kate, and thank you so much for presenting what you have, and I'm sorry you had to deal with so much. I'm just curious what qualifies as a professional healthcare provider in this study. So, um, and the MDs only, or? So I, I presented the, the, the literature to this, and in talking with uh, people at this conference, and in emailing different doctors, uh, Dr. Chesky, Necker Altmuller, uh, everyone kind of fell into two camps. Either they had never heard of this, um, or they had heard of it, or they didn't consider it a problem. Dr. Chesky um, spent the last 10 months, as I conducted the survey, preparing me for what happens if I get 10 results. Uh, Eckhart Altenmuller thought uh, I would only get, he, he was concerned I wouldn't get any responses, because out of everyone he's ever seen for a phone dystonia, he said about 10 had ever seen before this problem. So uh, essentially anyone from the uh, panel community or anyone uh, related to anyone that works with the uh, performing artists hadn't really heard of it. I didn't mean to throw all pan professionals under the bus. There is just a disparity between what the musician's experience in regards to this problem and what any uh, literature, any a academia about this problem uh, yeah. provides. Oh, absolutely. And I don't feel that way. I, I represent neuromuscular therapy um, under healthcare and was curious about um, the role of perhaps neuromuscular therapy, trigger point therapy, and things like that, which can manifest in motor deficits, which can manifest in some of the symptoms that you have been experiencing. And I'm just curious if any of those avenues have been explored uh, by way of this study or in your personal experience or with the people that you surveyed. Um, people I surveyed, not that I work, we, we asked a lot of, uh, quali we use a mixed law, we asked a lot of qualitative things. Like I said, uh, I'm doing all the data processing inside yeah. three weeks. Uh, so we haven't gone to a lot of the qualitative measurements, which will take a lot of time to sort. Um, the literature, uh, you know, the five studies, they don't do anything with uh, treatments or preventions. So far, we're still in the what is this problem, we're trying to describe it phase. I'm hoping to uh, eventually, of course, get to, you know, uh, studying treatments and prevention, but we're not there yet. Uh, for my own personal, uh, being retrained by Jan Kegerweiss, um, it was more uh, focus of attention based. Um, things like, I did ask questions dealing with focus of attention, things like reinvestment theory, um, different ways of uh, re reprogramming your brain and how you perform these physical actions. That's how I was able to go from barely functioning to a full, and here we perform for about two hours. Um, <laughs>